Software Repositories. When you're using Linux, one of the big questions that come up is, what is the difference between Linux and a Linux distribution? Well, Linux technically is the kernel of the Linux distribution. So what we have is we have a system which is a collection of software. And the main piece that runs your operating system is your Linux kernel. So a kernel is the only program that is allowed to access memory, access the hard drive, um, lots of CPU things. Lots of the things are restricted to just the kernel. So when a computer starts up, what it does is it starts up the kernel. And the kernel is then able to start the other programs that then run. So then you have this thing called kernel space. And you also have this thing called user space. And things that run in the kernel have access to the physical hardware. And things that run outside the kernel have access to asking the kernel for things. Well, the kernel only manages the hardware and other programs and doesn't do a whole lot of user-specific tasks that users see. If you want to run a GUI, that's not run in the kernel. If you want to have a command prompt, that's not in the kernel. All these things are run by external programs that are outside of the kernel. And then you take all these programs that are run outside the kernel and you gather them together to make a working system. The kernel is the main piece, the brain that runs everything. And then all these other things are what makes the user experience. So Linux is the kernel, then a distribution is that big collection of software. People can decide which pieces of software they want and collect them together as a Linux distribution. So you'll see sometimes people say GNU Linux distribution. GNU is a project that includes lots of different commands that you'd use. Your shell, um, all of your commands to change ownership and change files and all these things are commands that are written to access or to make requests from the kernel and have the kernel do things and also provide an interface for users to type things. So the GNU project got combined with the Linux kernel and created this GNU Linux thing. And then you have other pieces of software such as your databases and your GUIs and all these things thrown together and makes a Linux distribution. So can Linux be installed without a Linux distribution? Well, kind of. Yeah, you can install it without a Linux distribution. But basically what you're doing is you're installing the kernel, and then when the kernel runs, it won't be able to do anything. So you really need something. Linux needs to be able to start something that you can use to run the rest of your system. So sometimes you'll have Linux kernel show up in things like Android phones and other devices, but those are still Linux distributions of some sort. So why do we need Linux distributions? It should probably be obvious at this point. You need Linux distributions because you need to be able to do something more than just work with the hardware. You need to be able to work with the users as well, and that requires Linux distribution. So what do Linux distributions leave to you? Well, Linux distributions come with a set of software. And they assume that this is the software that everyone or most people will need. And they bundle everything that's very common together. Everything that makes your system work. At that point, you need to decide which other software packages you want to install. If you want to build your own software packages, they're not part of your Linux distribution. Some distributions come with compilers. Some don't. Some you have to build them or add them, or add them later. Sometimes they are in a Linux repository. You download them and you get them installed in your system. Sometimes you have to manually go and grab things and build them or install them yourself. So, repositories. What is a repository? Well, the Linux distribution usually comes on a DVD or some bootable media, and then you install it, and it gives you your basic set of files. However, the DVD might not be updated regular basis, so 
that could be a bit of a problem. You might have a bunch of old files that need to be replaced. Additionally, you might have programs and files that you want in your system but are not part of the standard Linux distribution because they're not very common or they just assume that most people won't need these. They've taken what most people want and put there, but a DVD is limited really only to about four and a half gigabytes of data. So all the other things you might need but aren't on that DVD are stored in repositories. So a repository is a basically like a website with a base file that indicates what files are there and then it has references to everything else. Inside these files you also have information about what um, packages need. You need to know which dependencies each package has and this is all stored kind of in the repository so you can download and build packages. So what's the difference between a repository and a Linux distribution? Well, the repository is your extra stuff. It also includes your Linux distribution as well, but it's everything else you need. It could be terabytes of data, terabytes of files and programs, different versions, different, different things you might need to install in your system. A Linux distribution is more of this smaller confined grouping for getting you started. So what repositories or which repositories does my system have? And how do I add additional repositories? And why would I want to add more repositories? And then are there disadvantages? So let's go ahead and take a look at a Linux system. So right here we have a Linux system. So if I go down to the etc directory and I go into the yum.repos.d directory, I can see a list of files and all these files have the repo extension. These are my standard, well, standard repos. So I can go in here and I can look at each of these files. So the CentOS base, let's take a look at that, let's CentOS base. And I can see that it has a bunch of comments. And then it has this base thing, and it looks like a name, and then it has this mirror list, base URLs, GPU check, things like that. So what do we have here? Well, the name is the name of the repo. The mirror list is where you're going to find your files to download. You have this base URL as well, which gets you started there. The GPG check basically says, well, these packages could be signed. Do we want to check the key to make sure they're signed by the person who's supposed to sign them? There's this whole public key, private key thing. And once the repo is installed, you need to accept the key. And then any packages that are created and added to that repo get signed with their private key, which you can then verify with this public key. And the public key is right below in GPG key. So this base contains a whole lot of files. And then after that, you also have updates, extras, different repos that you can look at. There's also one thing you want to look at, the very bottom one, CentOS Plus, there is an abled equals zero, which means this one is not part of your lookups. So how does this work? Well, when you want to install something, it has to go look in the repos, you have to download files. Let's add an additional repo. So one that's very common is the ePAL release or ePAL repo. So I do a yum install ePAL release. This is a package that will give me the repo files for the ePAL repo. And you can see right here at the very beginning, it did loading mirror speeds. You can see it's looking at your base, your extras, your updates. These are repos that are active and it's going through and grabbing these and checking these, making sure that you have everything you need. It looks at the dependencies in order to get the ePAL release, figures out if there's any dependencies that need to be installed and there aren't any. And then asks me, do I want to download and install it? And I say yes. 
I could do D for download and just download it and not install it, but Y for downloading and installing. And then it installs this EPEL release. So then if I wanted to do a yum install EPEL release again, it's already installed, but you'll see looks like my GUI decided to take over. I can kill that process. Sometimes the applet on the desktop decides to take over. All right, so I yum install EPEL release. And now you see, in addition to checking the base extras and updates, it also checks EPEL to see if there are packages here. Now, if I take a look at my directory again, I can see that there is a new set of files right here. There is the EPEL repo file. So if I take a look at that one, I can see it has a list of things as well. I can go through and I can disable the EPEL if I want, or I can leave it enabled. You can see there's two other ones right here that are both listed as currently disabled. If I wanted to get the debug info versions, I could grab, just turn on this one right here and probably turn off the other one. Uh, if I want to get the source code, I could get the EPEL source and just enable that one. If I wanted to install a package from the EPEL release, Alpine, which is a great mail client based on the Pine client, is part of that. So you do yum install Alpine. And then it looks and it says, okay, you want to install Alpine. And it says Alpine right here. It says Alpine is part of the EPEL repository. It also requires mailcap, which is part of the base repository. So you can tell where you're getting it from. So I do Y. It downloads this mail cap. And then it says, wait a second, we don't have the key installed for EPEL. So I said, so I look at it and say, do I want to install it? And yes, I want to install the key. And I install the key and then it installs both of the packages. So that's how you get the new repo. That's how you use it and get it in place. All right. Where are the report repository files stored? Well, that's in the uh, etc directory, etc yum dot repos dot d directory. So you can see those. Can they be edited from the command line? Yes, they can. You can go in there and change them. You can disable and re-enable them. You can also remove these on the command line. So you can delete the repo files. Once you delete a repo file, it will remove the repo from use and you will not have to worry about it taking up memory every time you do a yum update. Also, it doesn't then give you the option of downloading the packages from that repo so they are removed. How do I update packages on my system? Hmm. We have a system and I probably have updates. So how would I update packages? Well, let's go take a look. If I go back over here, let's clear the screen. And if I do a yum update, it will then check all my repos and it'll see I have lots of packages that need to be updated. So I can say, okay, let's update them all. So I do a wide update them and then they start updating. The first thing they do is they start downloading and after they've downloaded all the packages, then they will start installing the packages. Now, if you have not accepted your key before, it will then require you to accept your GPG key before it will install the packages. How do I search for new packages or for new programs provided by the repository? Well, you can use the yum command once again. You do a yum install to install things. You do a yum update to update. If you want to search, it is a yum search. So if I wanted to find something such as Alpine, which I've already installed, I could do a yum search Alpine. Now that could be quick, could be slow, um, but much faster than just going to the web maybe. 
Sometimes the search will not tell you which package to install because you use the wrong search terms. So keep that in mind. It doesn't find everything always. How do I install new programs from a repository? Well, you use the yum install and the name of the package you want to install. And then how do I know which packages are installed? Well, there are a couple of different ways you can look at that. When you use yum, yum keeps track of all the packages that are installed in your system. However, there is the possibility to go around that because yum is actually a front end for the RPM package. So RPM is what's used to actually install and remove packages. And yum is a front end that downloads repository dependencies and everything and installs everything and keeps track. But you can look at things with RPM by itself. So let's jump back over here and we have everything installed. If I do a RPM minus QA, I will query all packages and this will list all the packages that are installed on my system. You can see that there are things like, well, it's a name, the name of the package, you have a version number, you have a release basically for which um, repo, or not repo, which uh, distribution it is, and then which architecture this is specific to. Most of these you can see is x86-64, which means it's the 64-bit version for the x86. So it runs on the newer processors. No arch means that it's really configuration files or something that doesn't depend on a specific architecture. If I wanted to do a update of something, I just update everything, but I could do a yum update and list a specific, specific package like nmap. It will check to see if there's any new updates and there are, well, none. If you want to install a package that isn't installed, let's see if we can find something that's not installed. So maybe bind yum install bind utils. Well, it's already installed. So you can install packages that way. If I want to search for something, I can do that. Let's say I really want to run a web server. So I can do a yum search web and see what shows up. It shows everything that has web in either the name of the package or in the name of the or in the description. You can see lots of things here. It's usually best to figure out what package you want to install. And that helps you narrow it down. So if you did a yum search for web server, you might find a shorter list, which might include what you want. Now, typically people use Apache and Apache, Apache is not listed in this list of packages. So how would you look for it? Well, you wouldn't search for web server because that didn't work. You might have searched for Apache. And then you come up with this list that includes other things. You got like Apache Commons and all kinds of things. And you start saying, well, which one is it? Which one has Apache? Well, it turns out it's the HTTPD package. And you can see HTTPD dot X 86 underscore 64 is the name of the package. It's actually the package is called HTTPD. It's the architecture and this is the description. So if I want to install the Apache web server. I do a yum install HTTPD. And then you can get it installed. So now we know how to install packages, how to update packages, and we also know how to figure out which packages are installed on the system. And this is your brief overview on using software repositories.